I am. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's uh, so Thursday night, the first Thursday of every month is usually our, our normal uh, Central New Jersey Brain Tumor Support Group. Tonight, we thought we'd do a little different. Um, I had asked um, Ashley and to uh, have somebody do a presentation for us on Gamma Tile, which is a new venture um, us, that we're going to be doing at JFK. And so when she said that she would do it, I talked to Stan and we thought that we would open to a wider format because we are about education and making sure that patients know everything that's going on um, to help them decide and, and give them the best care that they can receive. And uh, this is new and exciting. So we appreciate Dr. McCracken um, and Shana, Shannon. Um, coming and uh, joining us as well. Um, and of course, thank, thank Al Masella, um, who always supports um, our group and everything that we do. And it's been um, a great many years that we've been working with Al Masella. I, our Central New Jersey Support Group actually is in its 30th year. And we have two groups that meet uh, every Thursday night. Uh, we meet I'm not every Thursday night, the first Thursday of every month. We have been meeting since last March as webinars. So we will be meeting for the last half hour of our group, which is from eight to 8.30 tonight. And in our chat bot uh, button, we'll be putting the Zoom meeting link that you can join us on that. I also will be putting uh, our support group information up so that if anyone wants to join, because we'll be virtual for some time, um, we would love for you to join us and have a bigger group that meets uh, once a month. Um, it's a great group. As I said, we've been running for 30 years. Uh, I am a neuro navigator nurse. I work at the JFK University Medical Center. Um, we are part of a health system, Hackensack Meridian. Uh, we have a cancer rehab program that uh, is part of us. And so we will be, um, you know, we look at the whole journey of the patient. Uh, so I will turn the program over to Ashley and uh, thank you everybody. And if you have any questions, Ashley will explain that now. Thank you, Patty. We're so excited to hear that Gamma Tile is available to patients in New Jersey and to patients all across the United States. So there are now 31 brain tumor centers who are offering gamma tile therapy and, and many more who are in the process of doing that. So um, today we have a lot to share with you. Before we get started, I just wanted to go over some of the logistical items. So um, if you are familiar with Zoom, which I think most of us are in this era, um, this is a little bit different. This is a Zoom webinar, meaning that only the panelists can share their video or speak, but we would love to hear your questions. So if you have any questions, please submit them using either the chat tool or the Q&A tool at the bottom of the screen. Um, we'll also be sending out a couple of polls throughout the presentation. These are completely optional, but they just ask a couple of questions about your background. Um, before we get started, we'll share a quick animation that shows how gamma tile works to stop tumor cell division and to keep tumors from recurring. And then we'll have Dr. Jay McCracken present his experience with gamma tile. Um, Dr. McCracken is a neurosurgical oncologist at the Piedmont Brain Tumor Center in Atlanta, and his center is a gamma tile elite center. So that means he has a lot of experience with the therapy. He's used gamma tile on patients with gliomas, meningiomas, and brain metastases. And he has some great information to share and he can answer your questions from a clinical standpoint. And then after Dr. McCracken presents, we'll have Shannon, our gamma tile patient navigator, share her story. So gamma tile, uh, Shannon was first um, treated with gamma tile in December of 2019 after being di diagnosed with a glioma in 2003. So she has a long treatment history and is happy to share her story and how her Gamatel treatment went. So with that, I'll um, start with the animation. Gamatil is a surgically targeted radiation therapy for patients with operable brain tumors. Gamatil consists of a bioresorbable collagen tile that is embedded with four small radiation sources. Gamatil is implanted by a neurosurgeon, precisely where and when treatment will help the most, at the tumor site immediately after tumor removal. After the tiles are placed, 
Gamatile therapy begins delivering a therapeutic dose of radiation to the target area while protecting healthy brain tissue and minimizing radiation side effects. After the surgeon has safely removed as much of the tumor as possible, gamma tiles are placed into the operative bed, covering the tumor cavity with tiles. The number of tiles implanted is customized for each patient based on the size and location of the tumor. It takes approximately five minutes for the surgeon to place the tiles at the end of tumor removal surgery, and then the incision is closed. Gamma tile typically does not increase the length of hospital stay. Gamatile immediately begins delivering a targeted therapeutic radiation dose to remaining tumor cells. The tile provides a structural offset of the sources from brain tissue, protecting healthy tissue from the side effects of radiation. 50% of the therapeutic dose is delivered within the first 10 days after surgery, which helps prevent residual tumor cells from replicating. More than 95% of the dose is delivered by six weeks. Over time, and after the therapeutic dose of radiation is delivered, the tile is naturally resorbed by the body. Eventually, only the small inactive titanium sources remain. The latest advancement in brain tumor treatment. Gamma tile therapy is FDA cleared to treat patients with newly diagnosed malignant and recurrent brain tumors. With gamma tile, radiation treatment begins targeting tumor cells immediately rather than delaying radiation therapy while waiting for the incision to heal. For patients with recurrent meningiomas and brain metastases, studies have demonstrated a significant reduction in treatment site recurrence compared to their previous treatments. In patients with recurrent glioblastomas, or GBMs, gamma tile therapy demonstrates a potential for improved overall survival when comparing the effectiveness of surgery plus gamma tile therapy to other treatment modalities across different clinical studies. Gamma tile therapy is designed to protect healthy brain tissue, minimizing radiation side effects, including hair loss. In a clinical study, only one out of 74 patients experienced hair loss after being treated with gamma tile. Additionally, gamma tile is a one and done therapy and limits the burden of radiation treatment since patients receive treatment as they go about their daily life. With gamma tile, patients can focus on what matters most, healing. Gamma tile therapy a head start in the fight against brain tumors. To speak with a patient navigator, contact navigator at gtmedtech.com. All right, thank you, Sheena. And you probably see a familiar face in that video. So Shannon was featured there. Um, so excited to, to hear directly from the source later today. But with that, we'll hand it over to Dr. McCracken. Thank you, Ashley. Um, I'm happy to be here tonight and share our experience with you guys. Um, just a uh, disclaimer, I do have some patient pictures and videos in here. Um, and so I'm happy to let everybody know when we're going to show those just in case um, you don't want to see them. So uh, I'll share my screen. And so, uh, like Ashley said, I'm a neurosurgical oncologist at Piedmont Atlanta. Um, we have a very large brain tumor center treating um, uh, hundreds of patients a year uh, at our center. Uh, we are a part of the MD Anderson Cancer Network. And so we run uh, uh, quite a few clinical trials um, uh, with a lot of MD Anderson protocols. So if we can ever help you, please let us know. So what I wanted to talk about was sort of the scope of malignant brain tumors um, and really what this is aimed at treating and what we really use this for are brain metastases, uh, gliomas, especially high-grade gliomas, and malignant meningiomas. And just to kind of give you an idea of how many of those we see sort of in the population a year, um, by far brain metastases are, are far and away the most common tumors we treat. So uh, in the United States, over 100,000 new patients a year are diagnosed with brain metastases. Typically, these come from breast cancer, lung, colon, renal, and melanoma. Um, probably the next most common are high-grade gliomas. So when you think about glioblastomas or anaplastic um, uh, uh, gliomas, uh, those are much less rare, but uh, we see them quite often. They're actually the most common malignant brain tumor we see in adults. 
Um, and so glioblastomas are about uh, 11,000 new cases a year. Anaplastics are about 1,600 new cases a year. Uh, and unfortunately, as we know, uh, a lot of glioblastomas uh, will recur uh, within a significant uh, time period, usually within six to 12 months. And so um, our, our job and our goal is to prevent that from, from happening as long as possible. Uh, with malignant meningiomas, uh, these are much less common. Uh, I would say the vast majority of meningiomas that are within the population that we see are benign or what we consider grade one meningiomas. Um, you can see here that about 24,000 new cases per year. Uh, most of the benign meningiomas uh, just require surgical resection if they're symptomatic and then just surveillance. Uh, but grade two and grade three meningiomas, which are called atypical or malignant, uh, occur anywhere from 1,000 to 328 new cases a year. Um, and so those have a much higher chance of recurrence. Uh, typically, those are treated with uh, radiation therapy postoperatively uh, and sometimes chemotherapy. And so uh, with gametile, we are using those uh, in lieu of some of the external beam radiation. So what do we, how do we currently treat uh, these tumors? Um, obviously, they're all very much tailored to each patient. Uh, but in general, uh, most, uh, most start with either surgical resection or a biopsy to confirm the pathology. Um, when uh, patients are able, we do attempt a maximal safe resection, uh, which allows us to remove as much of the tumor as possible because we know from decades of data that extent of resection improves patient outcomes. Uh, following that, depending on what this is, uh, we either do a course of stereotactic radiosurgery. You may have heard things like gamma knife, uh, cyber knife, uh, or the linear accelerator. Uh, or we will do a fully fractionated course of radiation, which the radiation is broken up into many treatments depending on where the tumor is located. Uh, or sometimes when patients have many uh, uh, metastases, we'll do whole brain radiation. All of these are considered external beam radiation, uh, which can have effects on normal brain tissue, scalp, and skull. Uh, and then oftentimes uh, patients are either receive chemotherapy, immunotherapy, uh, many patients go on to get into clinical trials, Avastin. Uh, some of you know, may know of Optoon, uh, the tumor treating fields, which is pictured there in the lower right-hand screen. Um, and all of these are very acceptable and uh, standard of care for what we do. Um, the issue with external beam radiation uh, is, I'm going to show you a couple pictures here. Um, these are all uh, post-operative resection cavities where you can see that the, the amount of radiation needed to give to patients often covers so much normal brain. You can see here that the cavity uh, is just outlined here in red, but the radiation that is needed to treat this field often covers a significant portion of normal brain uh, that we often don't want to treat and can lead to harmful side effects. This is another picture uh, of a, uh, a patient with a traditional uh, external beam radiation uh, would look like. And so you can see that you know, while the tumor is, is centered right in this area, you're delivering a tremendous amount of radiation to other parts of the brain, uh, which can cause things, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, <clears throat> which can cause issues like uh, memory um, uh, loss, radiation necrosis, uh, and other harmful effects. Um, and so, uh, like we talked about, what is our current standard of care? Maximum safe resection, uh, plus post-op radiation therapy, plus or minus chemotherapy, depending on the pathology. Uh, and so what are the current pitfalls? Uh, oftentimes when we give standard external beam radiation, we have to wait weeks after the surgery to allow the wound to heal um, or the patient to become stronger after surgery to give it to. Oftentimes when we plan these radiation uh, therapies, we often have to guess at what we can see uh, because it's often dictated by just what the MRI shows. And after surgery, you can get confused by scar tissue versus real tumor or not. Uh, and it's, it's accurately planning the dose distribution, which can often be challenging. So here's a picture uh, of a uh, glioblastoma, which was resected. Uh, and you can see in the pre-op film, this is what it looked like. Here's the actual tumor. Post-operatively, you can see that radiographically, we have a gross total resection of the tumor. Um, but as we typically do, we wait weeks uh, until we start radiation therapy. And oftentimes these tumors can be so aggressive that we see even at three weeks before radiation's even started, there's already been a significant recurrence of tumor. And so now we're almost back to square one. Uh, this is another picture um, of a post-operative uh, resection cavity. 
uh, and then two weeks, it's often difficult to tell by uh, inflammation, scar tissue, or tumor what often needs treatment. So often we're guessing uh, at what we need to treat. So that's where kind of Gamatil came in, and it's, an, it's a truly tremendous technology that we're privileged to be able to use. Um, and uh, like the, uh, the film said in the beginning, uh, these are surgically implanted uh, collagen tiles, uh, which have four radiation seeds within them. Uh, these are very small, and I'll show you a picture of them in a minute, what it looks like. Um, and so uh, what are our indications? When do we use these? Who's appropriate for, uh, for them to be used? Um, Gamatile is FDA cleared to deliver radiation therapy in patients with newly diagnosed malignant tumors uh, and any recurrent intracranial tumors. And so it's kind of, a, it's a broad, uh, but yet very uh, specific definition. And so this includes patients with high-grade gliomas, including glioblastoma, brain metastases, and malignant meningiomas. Those are the most common uses. Um, the patient has to be obviously a candidate for surgery. Uh, the tumor has to be felt to be operable. It's not just a somebody who has a biopsy only tumor. Uh, and then if we feel they're going to need adjuvant therapy, specifically radiation. And so here's just another picture. You've seen this before, uh, but this is just a, a cartoon showing how the radiation affects. And so um, uh, it actually delivers radiation to a depth of approximately five millimeters of normal tissue. So if you can imagine this line is the extent of the resection, any of the small tumor cells that we leave behind that we cannot physically see with our naked eye to remove, uh, the radiation begins to work immediately uh, treating those. And so here's a picture uh, of a, a gamma tile treated patient uh, versus a standard external beam radiation. And so much like the uh, CAT scan I showed you earlier, uh, this is a typical CAT scan that we would get after implantation uh, where the gamma tiles, you can see the small seeds within the cavity themselves. And this is the radiation dose planning that's done. And you can see that compared to a traditional radiation plan, we are actually treating just the cavity and we are not significantly treating normal brain, uh, which does wonders for both the patient, uh, the normal brain, scalp uh, and bone, et cetera. So it's a tremendously better radiation plan uh, for the patient. And so uh, I'm gonna quickly talk about how this got approved and excuse me, how this got approved uh, and, and why it was uh, looked at so favorably. And so there was a trial done, uh, which started in 2013 out of uh, Phoenix, Arizona, closed in 2018, about five years later. Uh, and they treated 100, uh, excuse me, 96 patients with 108 implants. Uh, and all these were designed to treat aggressive, uh, presumed malignant tumors. Uh, and so the design was maximum safe resection plus implantation of gamma tiles. Um, and the endpoint was we looked at local control and then overall survival as well as toxicity. And you can see here in the trial, there was 52 gliomas, 35 meningiomas, 16 brain metastases, and five other tumors. With respect to the meningiomas, uh, you can see that the local control, which means that the tumor did not grow back at the site uh, of where it was previously resected. Uh, in patients who did not have any previous radiation, those who got gamma tile, there was no recurrences all the way up to four years after the gamma tile was implanted. Uh, a little bit less in patients who had a prior radiotherapy, but a significant improvement in the local control. Uh, compared to previous treatments, this is just a bar graph showing the same thing where all the way out to 60 months from the time of implantation out to 60 months, the rate of control of tumors that where it did not come back at all was significantly higher than those who had gamma tile. And so um, you can see that compared to, you know, all the other patients who just received nothing, maybe radiation, uh, maybe a chemotherapy, the gamma tile patients did extremely well. Uh, with respect to brain metastases, we, uh, they saw the same thing in the trial. Uh, everything even starting at 12 months, uh, progression-free survival or um, uh, prevention of local recurrence was almost 100% at six months. 83 all the way out to 24 months. And so you can see the difference between local control uh, with patients who had uh, gamma tile and who didn't. Uh, and this is just another uh, showing surgery plus radio surgery, which is the standard of care currently, and then those with surgery plus gamma tile and large brain metastases. So uh, a significant improvement in local uh, control. Uh, they also looked at recurrent glioblastomas, so patients who had had 
previous surgery plus what we call STUP protocol chemo radiation for the first six weeks after resection. These are patients who recurred at some point during their, you know, their post-operative period. Um, and these are patients who underwent surgery again. And so the, gr the group that really did the most well was those who received gametile plus surgery, obviously, and Avastin, uh, which some of you may have heard of. Uh, this also compared groups who just had resection, uh, Optune, uh, Avastin alone, or radiation plus Avastin. So you can see that uh, in a lot of these cases, gametile plus Avastin uh, almost doubled uh, overall survival for these patients. And so we always have to balance, you know, uh, how well patients do uh, with uh, a disease tolerance uh, with their adverse effects. And so uh, what's also extremely important about this is that it's actually a very safe technology. And so uh, wound infection rate is extremely low, uh, less than 3%, uh, as is the rate of uh, CSF leaks, which uh, can often happen after multiply recurrent surgeries, uh, as well as any uh, hematomas related to the surgery itself. Um, very low, 1.3%. So overall, this is a very safe technology. Um, one of the things that we can also see with uh, traditional external beam radiation, uh, and a lot of you may have heard of it, is radiation necrosis or this inflammatory scar tissue that can build up in the brain uh, after, um, uh, after we get radiation. And so with traditional uh, implantable seeds, uh, not, not gametal, but for traditional implantable seeds, radiation effects was almost 18 to 50%, which is, which is really significant. Uh, oftentimes these require significant steroids. Uh, these require uh, Avastin or potential repeat surgical resection. Uh, the uh, radiation necrosis rate with gametile was extremely low at 8%. So um, a much, uh, much more well-tolerated uh, therapy. Um, this is just some of the workflow. This is actually me in the operating room. Um, uh, after we've completed the resection, uh, you can see here that the little tiles are kept in a little lead uh, case. Um, and what we'll do is we'll actually pick them up with a little set of tongs and then place them in the field. And I'll show you guys how we do that. Um, so you can see this is how they look. They're very small, uh, but very easy to manipulate um, and easy to place. And so we typically place these underneath the microscope uh, so that we can uh, be very accurate with them. And there's just a picture of us placing them underneath the microscope. Uh, and so I have, I have some patient examples that I'd like to share. Um, I'll kind of go through uh, their histories and then I'll show some pictures and maybe some videos. And so um, I'll let you guys know if I'm gonna show a video and if you wanna um, not watch that's, but nothing, nothing is gruesome in this, I, I promise you. Um, so the first patient was one of our first that we treated, uh, CJ. Uh, she was a 67-year-old female who was diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma of the lung in uh, October of 2018. Uh, in July of the next year, she presented with slurred speech and right-sided weakness. Um, she was found to have a large intraaxial brain metastasis, and so we took her to the operating room uh, and removed it with traditional craniotomy, uh, and then she had uh, uh, stereotactic radiosurgery to the cavity, which is our typical practice. Uh, she improved dramatically, uh, and then about eight months later, uh, her symptoms came back. Uh, the same worsening speech difficulty and right-sided weakness. Uh, she, got, she got another MRI, which showed a recurrence of her tumor. And so this is the recurrence here. So this is her MRI showing uh, almost complete recurrence of the tumor, which had broken through the radiation therapy that we had given her. Uh, and so the plan was to treat her with gametile. And so we took her back to the operating room uh, removed all the tumor. And so you can see here, these are the post-operative uh, images showing uh, a complete gross total resection uh, of the tumor here. And uh, this is a quick video uh, I'll show. This is just after uh, the radiation, excuse me, the resection has been completed. Uh, this is actually the cavity. And so now we're just going to uh, quickly place uh, the gamma tiles under the microscope uh, into the cavity. And so you can see that they're very easily placed. Um, sometimes you have to move them around a little bit to make sure that we have appropriate coverage, but they're very easily placed. And so what we'll do is we'll typically line them up side by side, kind of in all directions to make sure that the cavity is covered. Um, oops, excuse me. And so that's a, it's a very uh, simple thing to do. Uh, this is actually, we've closed the dura. 
Uh, and we're actually going to place a couple tiles just right over the top of the dura because we did leave a small amount of tumor up here. Uh, and the nice thing is, is that especially with the gamma tiles, you don't have to feel like you're removing all of it uh, because the radiation will start working on that tumor. So if there's any that's stuck to a large vessel or nerve, you can actually put the gamma tiles up, up next to it and it will start working immediately. Uh, this is another patient. Uh, this is a 50-year-old male who initially had a grade one meningioma resected in February 2018. Uh, he had a recurrence just adjacent to that spot uh, about a year later and underwent repeat resection. At that time, the tumor had progressed from a grade one to a grade three, which is considered a malignant meningioma. At that time, he had a winter course of external beam radiation and did well till again, about a year and a half later, he had a separate recurrence distal to that in another area. He underwent a repeat craniotomy, again, confirming a malignant meningioma. Uh, and then almost a year later, he has third recurrence uh, with progressive seizures. At this point, he had already received so much radiation, we didn't feel like it was safe to do that. Uh, this is a picture of his tumor. You can see the previous resection cavity here uh, and the newly recurrent tumor, which had just kept creeping along uh, the edges of the bone and invading the brain. So uh, we decided to treat this patient with gamma tile. Uh, we took him back to the operating room. You can see that we had a uh, removal of the tumor completely. Uh, and then we placed the gamma tiles. And so uh, this is a post-op CAT scan showing the small tiles in place and where we placed them. And so anywhere there was uh, room for the tumor to spread along the edges, we placed the tiles. And so that's why you can see it's not just in the cavity that we treated, but it's all along the sides of the tumor uh, and the edges of the dura. Uh, and since that time, he has not had any recurrence. Um, this is another patient, 51-year-old uh, female with triple negative uh, metastatic breast cancer. Um, prior to us seeing her, she had had no surgery, but she had had multiple rounds of stereotactic radiosurgery to two separate lesions. Uh, over the course of about a year, uh, she had progression uh, of the tumor. And so she had two different spots, which had progressed through the radiation that had been done uh, at another hospital. And you can see She's got one deep here, kind of right in the middle of the brain in the left frontal lobe, and then another one in the right temporal lobe. Uh, you can see that she had had significant swelling and edema in the brain, uh, and was on a tremendous amount of steroids, uh, which were causing her to have that, that Cushingoid appearance where she's, uh, her blood glucose was up, her face was swollen, uh, she was, her skin was getting very brittle because of all the steroids. And so, uh, we elected to take the patient back, and we actually treated both lesions at once. And so uh, through two separate incisions, uh, we removed this lesion as well as this lesion, placing gamma tile behind. Uh, these are just pictures showing resection of both. So resection here, resection here, as well as the gamma tile implantation on both. And she did excellent. And uh, we were able to wean her off the steroids, uh, and uh, she has been uh, progression-free since that time. Uh, the last patient I'll show you uh, is a patient HE. He's a 67-year-old male uh, who had a left frontal glioblastoma after just a small biopsy at an outside hospital. Uh, after the biopsy, he underwent standard chemotherapy and radiation in Optune tumor treating fields. Uh, he had had several progressions which required changing of his chemotherapy. Uh, and then when he came to see us, he had significant aphasia and word-finding troubles. Um, we initially considered a Vastin, but the patient was on um, Eliquis for a previous deep vein thrombosis. We didn't think that was a good idea. And so we felt significant debulking would, would really help this patient. And so this is a look at his MRI. Uh, you can see here the significant recurrence in the left frontal lobe. So we took the patient back uh, and with uh, glioblastomas, it's tough to remove all of it uh, just because they are infiltrative tumors. And so you can see here that we did get a, a really good resection, but not all. Uh, but thankfully, we're able to leave the gamma tiles behind in the cavity, uh, which starts working on the recurrent tumor almost immediately. And so we don't have to do any extra radiation after that. Um, I am going to show a quick video of him. And so um, I just want to warn everybody. Um, this is just a picture uh, of us uh, prior to taking the tumor out. This is his previous uh, biopsy site. Uh, and we're going to start working uh, to, take, uh, to work around that site and take the tumor out. Um, another interesting thing that we did with this patient is that we used Gliolan, uh, which some of you may have heard of. It's called 5-ALA. Uh, uh, 
Uh, it's an ingestible imaging agent that allows us to see the tumor under a dark blue light. And so it helps us to readily uh, distinguish tumor from normal brain. And I'll show you a picture of how that goes. And so after we remove normal appearing brain, or excuse me, after we remove normal appearing uh, tumor, and then we're unable to distinguish it from uh, normal brain, uh, we'll actually turn on the blue light, which I'll show you here. And so this is under a very special microscopic filter. And so what you're seeing here is the pink uh, at the bottom of the resection cavity. And this is actually the glioma. And so this allows us to very easily distinguish in real time what's tumor and what's not. And so any of the normal brain you can see is dark blue. And so you can see as the pink starts going away as we're resecting, uh, it allows us to know exactly what's what. And so this is a tremendously powerful tool that allows us to resect as much of the glioma as possible uh, without needing things like an intraoperative MRI. And so we'll flip back and forth and then we'll, we'll remove tumor as much as we can. And this is just, just going back and forth in the edges, cleaning up the glioma uh, until we see normal appearing brain in all directions. Once the glioma has been removed, uh, we'll actually do the same process where we put the gamma tiles in. Uh, and so the gamma tiles are laid in the cavity, just sort of in a circumferential pattern, uh, covering all of the cavity until uh, we feel, um, uh, until, we, until we feel we're done. And so you can see they're just laid in, in, uh, in there, uh, very easy, very simple to do. Um, when we have multiple tiles that we uh, want to make sure they stay in place, um, we'll actually use this green glue. It's called Adherus. It's a dural sealant glue. Uh, and it's safe to use in the brain. We use it all the time. Uh, and this will actually hold the tiles in place so they don't move around. Uh, and this is important because we want to make sure that the dose that we've selected for the brain cavity stays the exact same and doesn't, doesn't change. And so this is very important. Uh, and that's kind of what the final product looks like. Uh, and so uh, our patient experience so far, we've done nine patients with a total of 10 lesions, um, uh, four brain metastases, four glioblastomas, and one malignant meningioma. Um, so far, uh, for all these patients, we've had no evidence of recurrence from three to six months of their follow-up. We've had no evidence of wound breakdown, infection, or spinal fluid leak. Uh, we've had one patient with radiation necrosis, which was mild and is self-resolving. So um, overall, it's been a very safe therapy for us. Um, there are some clinical trials which are coming out. Uh, we are going to be participating in uh, two of them. Uh, one, we just recently had approval for implantation upfront for large or greater than three centimeters brain metastases. Uh, and this will be uh, uh, compared to standard postoperative uh, SRS. Uh, and then we are currently working on a uh, protocol uh, with an international group for the treatment of glioblastoma up front with gamma tile. Uh, and this is something that we are, we are truly excited about because in one of those pictures I showed you up front where you can actually see recurrence of gliomas up to two or three weeks after surgery before radiation, our hope is that this will prevent that from happening. And so uh, we're very excited that this will go a long way in, uh, in helping treat glioblastoma. Uh, and so these are, uh, excuse me, these are some of the centers around the country. Uh, we're proud to be able to change this today to an elite center. So uh, given our experience, so uh, we're very proud to be able to do that. And um, uh, this is our team. Uh, we have a wonderful team of uh, another surgeon, Dr. Kinning, uh, who works with me in our, our, in our oncologist, Dr. Dunbar, uh, and then four wonderful radiation oncologists and physicists who work with us. So um, with that, I will stop and uh, take any questions. Thank you, Dr. McCracken. That was a great presentation and had a lot of informative content and also generated a lot of questions. So um, the first question was, what benefits are realized with gamma tile compared to gliadel wafers? So maybe you can explain kind of how they're different and how they, they treat. Yeah, so gliadel is actually uh, a chemotherapy wafer. So gliadel was actually uh, carmustine uh, or CCNU um, and so it was not radiation, it was actually a implantation of a, of a chemotherapy. Um, and so um, it has its uses. I think it's, it's not used as often nowadays, um, uh, but it's, it's just a very different treatment type than, than just radiation therapy. Excellent, thank you. 
And we got a question, why is gamma tile not part of standard of care for those with GBM currently? Um, so that's a good question. Um, so uh, the vast majority of standard of care for GBM involves uh, maximal safe resection or just biopsy if it's not able to be resected, uh, followed by stoop protocol chemo radiation, which is uh, six weeks of temozolomide or temodar uh, plus, um, plus radiation for six weeks. That's kind of the gold standard. And um, most clinical trials <clears throat> require patients to have gone through that, that standard of care prior to starting any new therapies. Um, and so that's one of the things that we're really working on now is to you know, get it into a clinical trial where it, do, it won't exclude patients from other you know, therapies down the line. Um, and so our, our hope is that it will show a lot of benefit um, and, uh, and really improve those, those patients. Thank you. Um, can you comment on how your patients tolerate gamma tile versus standard external beam radiation? Um, so I would say that uh, our patients have tolerated it really well. Um, we always, the, the biggest concern that we initially had from patients and also like our nursing staff and operating room staff was, are these patients gonna be emitting radiation to everybody else? And um, it's very safe. We have a dosimetrist who comes down and actually checks the radiation uh, over the surgical site before we close and leave the room. And we've never had a patient who has been even close to the, the safe level that, that is emitted. Um, and so it's actually very safe to be able to uh, sit next to these patients, sleep next to your you know, spouse if you're in bed with them. Um, and so they've actually tolerated it really well. Um, they really can't tell a difference. You know, they know they've had surgery, but they can't tell there's a difference in the radiation. Um, with external beam radiation, people can often get, you know, redness or swelling on the scalp. They can lose their hair. Um, and so um, I think it's tolerated very well. Excellent. Um, can gamma tile replace standard external beam radiation or can you ever do both? And I think you spoke to that a little bit in the trial, but can you share more about what you're currently doing in practice? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, gamma tile, we have to remember that it's a, it's a relatively new technology. And so, um, you know, and not, not every center, you know, offers it. Um, for the longest time, especially with brain metastases, the standard of care and all the level one evidence out there was uh, resection followed by whole brain radiation. And that was, that was what we did for everybody. And it wasn't long ago that we did that, but we quickly realized that whole brain radiation, while it dramatically improved local uh, control, it had devastating effects on patients' memory and their cognitive function. And so, um, you know, patients, you know, they just, they look terrible after several months of whole brain radiation. So we really backed off on, on doing that because we realized it was just hurting people. And so now we've gone more to stereotactic radio surgery, which has shown to be just as effective as whole brain um, without the cognitive side effects. And so I think as we continue to improve, you know, I think, I think gamma tile probably will be, you know, will become standard of care. And at least, you know, I, I could see that being the case. So. Thank you. Um, another question is, is MD Anderson the only facility that has this technology? And um, I can help you with that one. So no, <laughs> it's available at um, over 30 brain tumor centers across the United States from Piedmont Brain Tumor Center in Atlanta to Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York to USC and California and kind of everywhere in between. Yep. Um, another question, is the surgeon exposed to radiation and is that a concern during the implant procedure? So we, um, so yes, I mean, we are. Uh, we wear little badges or even little ring detectors uh, on our fingers that, that, um, uh, that will actually absorb the radiation, let us know how much we've absorbed. Um, so far, it's been so negligible. I haven't had to do anything about it. So we always wear our, our badges, our rings, and um, you know all of the radiation sources are kept within a lead container. They're very quickly put in the cavity, uh, and then it's closed. And so uh, the amount of radiation is is really negligible. So we don't we don't wear any special gloves or lead shielding or anything like that. Okay. Um, can you have gamma tile if you have had proton radiation? Yes. Um, was there stratification with molecular markers like MGMT and IDH in the trial? And if so, did it make a difference with survival? 
Um, <clears throat> not to my knowledge. Uh, I know that's something that we are looking at with the new glioblastoma trial uh, is separating those out and even even stratifying patients based on those markers on who who may or may not get get the therapy. So that was not done, but that's something that's probably going to come in the future. Okay, great. And then we got a question. Um, my brain tumor is not operable. Could gametile be an option, like in a minimally invasive way? Um, I, so with with gametile, I mean, um, you have to have a cavity for it to go into, and so. Um, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't spread so far in the brain that it can sort of cover everyone. It has a very limited uh, space that it can spread and work towards. And so, um, it really has to be an operative, you know, case first uh, for us to be able to implant the, the seeds into. And so, um, you know, while uh, I, I'm sorry if it's just a if it's just a biopsy case or an unoperable case, um, gametal probably wouldn't be wouldn't be appropriate there. Um, another question, we often get asked if gametile would negate any patients from enrolling in a clinical trial in the future. What has your experience been like with that? Um, I would say that, you know, we've evolved in kind of how we've looked at, at, at this therapy. And so initially we were using this for patients who, you know, they, were, they had failed multiple therapies and they had done, you know, they had multiple surgeries, multiple radiation, you know, and they were kind of at their just their wits in to try to try something different, right? Um, and so we were able to offer that to them as opposed to doing nothing. Um, so those patients weren't really considered in clinical trials anyway. Um, I will say that um, it's a rather new technology and I think a lot of trials right now, probably it probably would be an exclusion. Um, that's why we're trying to really get it into, um, uh, into multiple trials on its own so that they would be included in trials and be able to be treated, you know, on a trial basis, especially for Mets and gliomas. Okay, thank you. And then two more questions. Um, the first is, can gametal can be combined with other treatment options like chemotherapy or Optune? Uh, yes, so for sure. Uh, and so um, it works just like radiation. And so after radiation, if, if you're, if, you know, if you need chemotherapy, immunotherapy, Optune, those are things we use all the time in conjunction with that. Okay, great. And then the last question, um, is is there is this covered by insurance? Sorry, I'm reading. <laughs> is it covered by insurance um, in your experience? Um, yeah, so it all becomes part of the, I mean, how, how the hospital gets paid. It's all part of a surgical DRG. So it goes into the cost of surgery and so, um, and Ashley, you may be able to tell me more, but from my standpoint, there's not a cost to the patient, right? That's correct. It is yeah. covered by um, Medicare and most private insurance. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. And then I think that's all we have for today. And I know you have, you're on call, so um, you'll have to be stepping off. But if anyone has additional questions for Dr. McCracken, if you could just submit them and I'll circle back with him after this and get those answered. Sure. I'll, I'll hang so on for as long as I can. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. McCracken. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, thank you for joining our group tonight. You're welcome. And then with that, we'll hand it over to Shannon. So Shannon is our gametal patient navigator and a glioma survivor. She received gametal therapy in December 2019 mm -hmm. and um, has volunteered to share her experience with us today. So thank you so much, Shannon, for doing that. No problem. It's going to be a hard act to follow uh, Dr. McCracken. That was uh, really interesting, though. I like to see all the videos of the, the actual surgeries and everything like that. Um, I, I begged my neurosurgeon to like film my surgeries before, but he's like, I don't think you really want to see those, but um, I actually would. So um, just to kind of start off, I'll tell you a little about, bit about myself. Um, as I said, I mean, my name is Shannon. Um, I'm a wife and a mother. Um, I have a 19 year old daughter um, who's sitting right beside me. So hopefully she can kind of calm me down a little bit if I start to, to ramble. Um, anyway, I was diagnosed with a low grade glioma in the occipital lobe, which is right back here, controls vision and everything um, back in 2003. So um, kind of been dealing with this for quite a while. Um, I've had three, uh, uh, surgeries to try and remove it because it is recurring. And so the last one was done with gametile. 
Um, I've also had external beam radiation, which I can kind of talk a little bit about later on, um, whenever I talk about like how my experience was with recovering with the gamma tile, et cetera. So um, there's quite a difference between my recovery with gamma tile and also external beam radiation. Um, lots of things to contrast there. So um, another thing is, is that um, I am a gamma tile patient navigator. Um, we can talk more about that later. And also I'm a Chiefs fan. So in case anybody's out of the loop or whatever, we're actually playing in the Super Bowl this weekend. So maybe we can knock Tom Brady's, you know, little status down a little bit. So go Chiefs. Mm -hmm. um, hope that you guys can all watch that and then enjoy, uh, enjoy seeing us win. So anyway, um, next I wanna show you basically a, a video it's a, of my brain tumor story, um, kind of encapsulates everything all into a, a video and, and will keep me from rambling on forever. So here we go with my brain tumor story. I was 31 years old and I realized that something was going on. This is what they're called. And I started to have some visual disturbances. And I was getting lost in my own house, um, getting lost on the way home from the grocery store. Just things seemed off as far as directionally. So I went into the emergency room and that's whenever they told me that I had a brain tumor. So I found Dr. Clough, who was my neurosurgeon, and I had my first surgery in August of 2003. And um, in 2007, I was given Timidar, which is a form of chemotherapy. After that, I found out again that the tumor was growing in 2013. So I underwent another surgery. It started to grow again. So in 2014, I had external beam radiation as well as a form of chemotherapy. It was not a pleasant thing. Um, I experienced everything that they told me I was going to experience. It was extreme fatigue, of course, the, the dreaded hair loss, and that was probably the worst part of it, to be honest. Uh, they told me at the very beginning uh, that there would be some hair loss, but I had no idea how much, and I can remember looking in the mirror and crying because I was pulling out clumps of hair. And last year, 2019, um, again, found out that my tumor was growing back, and my doctor told me at that time, Dr. Clough, um, that he had a new therapy that he'd like me to, me to consider. Instead of like external beam radiation, um, he wanted me to try this new form of radiation. So he told me at that time about gamma tile, which I was just fascinated by because I couldn't imagine just this little white, you know, tablet looking thing with, with radiation beads in it. and it really just targets the areas that need to be targeted and leaves the rest of normal brain tissue alone. He said that there's been a lot of good success with it and not really have any hair loss, etc. I was I was very interested. I was told that I would be the first patient in Kansas to receive uh, gamma tile therapy and actually at that time I was one out of 11 in the country to have received it. So that kind of made me jump on board too, because I, uh, I definitely wanted to, to be a part of helping other people. Dr. Clough and I have been together through this entire thing. He's done all three of my surgeries. I've always told him, I'm like, next time can you just shave my entire head if you're gonna shave the back of my hair because it takes so long to grow out. So this time I thought, I'm gonna play a joke on this guy if I'm gonna to have to go underneath the knife anyway. So I went to a barber shop and I shaved in my hair, cut here um, in, inside my the back of my hair. And apparently he thought that was pretty funny. I asked him later on what he thought. He was like, well, I'm glad that you gave me instructions. I knew exactly where to go. <laughs> I, I try not to take this too seriously because I just think if you do, you're just setting yourself up to be kind of depressed about it or whatever, and that's not me, so and look at everything with a, you know, happy face. So coming out of the procedure, um, I felt great. This is the, probably the best recovery I've ever had. I feel like I hit the, you know, the ground running and have not 
had any struggles really since then. I did not experience any hair loss or any other side effects. Dr. Clef and I are both very pleased with the outcome of the, the surgery and the gamma tile. Um, I've had two MRIs since then and um, he's been very pleased with the results and I have too. I, it gave me a lot of hope uh, because I'll be honest, the, the radiation, external beam radiation experience was not pleasant for me. So just hearing that there was another type of treatment possible um, really gave me hope. So yeah, I think that anybody who's told that gamma tile is a, um, a therapy that they can use, I think that they should definitely look into it and consider it strongly. Sorry about that. We had to try and figure out how to unmute. Um, so like my video pretty much explained my history. So, um, you know, my, my introduction to gamma tile was through my, my doctor. Um, he's been my neurosurgeon for all of my surgeries. He's absolutely fabulous. Um, so uh, he, I, I trust him implicitly. So whenever he told me about this, um, that it was, you know, safe and that there was no hair loss and it would, would only target basically the main areas of the brain that needed to be targeted. I was just like, yes, I'm totally on board. So um, anyway, we went forward with um, everything that we needed to go forward with. And, you know, one of the things that I can say about gamma tile and as far as my recovery is concerned, um, I, I felt great. So I didn't feel um, sick or, you know, tired or anything like that with, like I did with external beam, um, you know, and, and on, honestly, going back and forth to external beam radiation treatments all the time is very draining as well. Um, I went, you know, every day for six weeks when I had external beam, I lost my hair, um, which took a long time to grow back. And, you know, you just kind of feel a little bit defeated, I guess, at times. So, um, you know, the gamma tile really helped me keep a better perspective on things and, you know, no hair, hair loss or anything like that. So um, one question I did get asked a couple of days ago by somebody was, um, can you feel it after it's put into your head? And the answer to that is no, you don't feel anything in there. Um, your body naturally absorbs it and all it leaves behind is the radiation beads. So, um, you know, there's, there's no weird feeling or anything like that with, with the gamma tile. So, and you know, very minimal side effects like the, the slide list here. So anyway, um, and I think I just kind of went over this. So my procedure and recovery. So um, I was, it was, mine happened in December of 2019 um, at a hospital here in Overland Park, Kansas. Um, as I stated earlier, I was the first patient in Kansas to receive this therapy. Um, so that was, that was a pretty big deal. Um, this was my third recurrence of my, of my brain tumor. So, uh, I was a little bit nervous about having a third brain surgery, but you know, th this actually, uh, this recovery was, was the best that I've ever had. So I felt like I, you know, I just felt so much better than my other two. So, um, my MRIs have all shown that there's no signs of tumor recurrence, and I actually have an MRI coming up on the 23rd of February, so hopefully the news uh, is the same. So I mentioned the, pa the patient navigator program earlier in my talk, and so that is basically, um, I'm a navigator, so if you want to contact me or uh, to talk about, you know, my, the things that have happened to me, um, my procedures, et cetera, how I felt during my, my uh, time with having a tumor, then you can contact um, the website like they, they show below and, the, and also the phone number there. So I'm happy to answer any questions or um, try and help you along on your, on your journey as well. So thank you for your time and letting me talk today. Thank you, Shannon. Your story is very inspiring and um, we all just really appreciate your outlook on things. So we, we did get a couple questions. The first is more of a comment and it's go Chiefs. <laughs> you have a fellow Chiefs fan. 
I hope this weekend is good for you. Um, the next question is, did you have to take any special precautions at, once you returned home? Actually, I did. Um, so as you heard the doctor mention earlier, um, they do test the radiation coming from you after surgery, um, and they make sure that you're safe before they send you home. So um, I was sent home, and the, the thing is, is you're supposed to basically stay away from people for about the first I think it's two weeks, um, two to three weeks, stay within at least six feet of people. So it's kind of like social distancing before we actually have to do that. So um, anyway, and, and as far as like uh, sleeping with a partner or whatever, um, I think I did sleep away from my husband for, for a while before, um, you know, going back to the same room with him. So, um, and, and also just kind of staying out of the public areas uh, for about two to three weeks. So that's about the, I guess the biggest drawback I should say. Um, but you know, other than that, nothing to, to say about other than that. Okay, great. And then we had another question. So, so with gamma tile, there are no radiation appointments after the surgery. So just to kind of clarify, it's one and done. Yes, yes. There is no additional um, appointments or anything needed. So it's implanted and you just, you know, like they said earlier, um, it's like 90% done within like the first 90, you know, three weeks, I believe. Um, so now you can't, you can have more gamma tile put in later on if you need to. So that's also possible. Um, yeah, there's no follow-up appointments. Okay, great. And then we got a question about um, MRIs. So does the gamma tile interfere with any MRIs? That you no, not, not that I'm aware of. It, actually, the, the very first MRI that I had, like coming out of surgery, um, you know, they, they want to check and make sure they got everything and also make sure that the gamma tile placement is where they thought it should be. Um, I did have to have a card and um, basically show it to the person giving me the MRI saying, I have these, these beads in my head. And um, so I guess, I don't know if that, and maybe you actually, you can answer this question better. Um, I don't know if that kind of determines like what type of MRI test they give you or if they're just, a, because there is a magnet in an, in an MRI machine. So they yeah. want to know that there's magnetic things in your head, I guess. Yes, so the seeds themselves are um, very small in titanium and they're MRA compliant, but they probably just wanted to let um, the tech know that if they see something in there, that's what it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, and then I think that's all we have for questions. So if anyone has additional questions, um, please reach out to us at navigator at gtmedtech.com and we'll pass those along to Shannon and we can connect you. But Shannon, thank you so much for sharing your story and for joining us this evening. It's great to hear um, your perspective as a patient. We really thank you for having that. me. So um, Patty, I believe you have um, some a Zoom room to share. Is that correct? Oh, you're on mute. Um, Patty, you're still on mute. As I was saying, I'm not that tech savvy. <laughs> um, but yes, we are going to be holding a support group um, after this. I, I don't have, I'm working between two emails because my work email has everything and I'm on my home computer. Um, so Stan, I don't know if you can share that in the chat if anyone wants to copy and paste and join the Zoom meeting. I was also putting in my information. As I said earlier, I am a um, neuro uh, nurse navigator for neuro oncology, um, but I'm mostly a patient advocate. I've been, you know, brain tumors are my uh, second family. So I am going to post my information. Um, just because you don't come to my center in New Jersey doesn't mean you can't run a question by me. And, uh, you know, I would love to help um, answer any questions that I uh, Ken, I've been in the field a long time. <laughs> so as I said, I'm going to put my number at the bottom of the screen. I'll put my ad, um, address as well. Um, please feel free to join us in our group. Uh, we will be meeting virtually probably for another, I'd said, at least six months. Um, 
thank you uh, so much for doing this. Ashley, it was great to meet you and see your face. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly write my address um, and uh, or my number, and uh, I hope uh, I'll see some of you on the Zoom meeting. All right, great. Thank you all for attending. This is recorded and um, will be available on Facebook Live. So if you want to send it to anyone, please do. Thank you, everybody, and have a great evening.